Hi, this is Jonathan Kraft with APQC. I am the manager of Open Standards Benchmarking here at APQC, and thought I would just take a little bit of your time to introduce you to the framework in terms of how you access it, where you get information to it, what type of information it provides, and then give you a little bit of more information on just kind of some follow on groups that you may be interested in, in connecting with or possibly engaging with. So what I thought I'd first start is just take you to our page and show you exactly how you access the process classification framework. So if you are on our website and you can see in the upper right hand corner, we have this area called tools. And if you click on tools and then you click this little plus button here, you can see that there's three areas within the process classification framework that I will uh, quickly take you through. So the first one is the cross industry version, the industry specific versions, and then we'll wrap up today and learn a little bit more about the process classification framework. So while this information is specifically on your screen, just thought I would quickly tell you the, the process classification framework was really started for organizations that wanted to benchmark and specifically they wanted to benchmark against other what they considered leading organizations. So in order for them to make sure that they were talking about processing payroll or how long it takes for them to hire somebody or their accounts payable process, they needed to make sure that they were really creating a solid comparison and, and including the same processes, the same activities, the same task in each one of the areas that they were looking to benchmark. And the framework outlines what those process and activities specifically are within the organization. And that was really where it, it started. It has taken on a variety of other forms from a framework perspective and that allows organizations to get into developing process maps and SIPOCs and RACIs. But the, the original uh, meaning and definition and origin of the process classification framework was really for benchmarking. And I'll show you how that looks and what that looks like from a from a framework perspective. So that's why it was really, really all started. But let me just jump into a framework and show you what it would look like. And so what I'll do is I, I'll click on this version here um, from a cross industry perspective. We just released version 7.3 last week. There's a couple forms in which I can actually show you in terms of how you might want to access this. Uh, the first one is in Excel and then the next one is in PDF. And again, I'll show you what those those specific examples look like. But as you can see here, as I mentioned, it's that taxonomy of business processes. And the key behind the framework, it is the definition of what organizations have to do. It's not the how, and we're not in the business of telling organizations how they have to execute all their processes, but we are in the business of giving them some insight to what are some of those specific steps that, ex that exist within the organization. So let me just open this up very quickly. Give this just a minute to download while I open this up, and let me show you what the, the actual file looks like. And the reason that the file is important as you download this is because it's an opportunity for individuals or an opportunity for organizations to really say, well, what is it that we have to do? And so you can see across the bottom here, we have our introduction. We have a little bit of, of about and the about page is important because it gives you some insight and I'll talk about this specifically to what all of these numbers are within within the organization, but it also gives you a detailed listing of what all of these structures here are at the bottom in terms of how we start at what we call a level one that's a category and break that all the way down into in some cases activity and task levels within within the organization. And then we start to get into our categories here, and this is where you'll start to really get some some key information. And I'll show you how this looks on each one of the subsequent, uh, a few of the subsequent tabs as well. But really, what we've done is we've said when we look at an organization, there are really at a high, at the highest level, about 13 things that an organization has to do. And when we look at these 13 items, we break them down from a parent-child relationship or in a hierarchy where we get very specific as you saw on some this, this previous page here. So these are all what we would consider a level one or a category, and then we break them all down into more detail. So what you'll see is these are the items that, that specifically list here. The other very important process around this is what we've done in terms of creation of the process classification framework is a concept that we call MISI, which is mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive. And what that means is for each of the items that exist within our framework, it only exists one time. And the reason for that is we want to avoid any duplication that might ex exist across an organization. Again, this is the what you do from an organizational perspective. The how you do it, all of that information, that's outside of the framework, but the framework can help you define what an organization specifically has to do. And you can see, again, 
everything from how you develop your vision and strategy, how you manage your supply chain or deliver services, all the way through some of the financial resources, how you manage your assets, to this area down here, section 13, which is relatively new in the last few years that said, these are all the business capabilities that we have around uh, process management, knowledge management, how do we execute portfolio management, all of those activities and tasks that happen with an organization that are really key in terms of making sure that those those areas flow across the organization, maybe that above the flow uh, activities that that is specifically happen within an organization. So let me give you just a quick example of what this might look like if you were to delve into a, a certain area. And again, you can see these hierarchy uh, numbers right here correspond to all of the tabs that are across the bottom. We have a combined version. Uh, we have some glossary terms that are in there, and then we have some specific metrics that are associated with open standards as well. So as an example, if I just pick manage financial resources and I click on section nine down here, what you can start to see as I scroll to the top here, what you can start to see is this. These are all of the activities that organizations have to do in order to manage finance within their organization. So everything from the planning and management of accounting to how they're doing cost control, cost management, all the way down to things like revenue accounting, invoicing, AR, uh, managing adjustments and deductions, how they're doing general accounting and reporting, all of those specific activities within an organization. And what you'll find is from an importance perspective, there's really three columns that are very, very important for individuals. And it's these first three columns right here. And so what I'll show you is, is you'd start to look at these is if I look at all of these in, in detail, you can see that the first item here is this process classification framework ID. These are unique IDs to APQC. So regardless of what version of the framework, and I'll show you what that looks like, or where this information is, this number is unique to this process activity or this process uh, task or whatever level of the framework that, that I'm specifically in. So that's the first item that's there. The second one is this hierarchy ID, which shows, again, that decomposition that happens within an organization. So if I'm going to be doing planning and management accounting, these are the, the, the processes and the activities that I need to make sure that I'm doing from a uh, from a process perspective to really execute these steps within the organization. And then the last one here is obviously just what is the name of the activity or the name of the process or whatever, again, whatever level you might be at. So those are those are very important. The other item that's important, and you'll see this jumping around a little bit as I'm moving my cursor, is this box right here that talks about these details. And so if I show you this as an example, it shows you what the, the process definition specifically looks like from a framework perspective. So if we wanted to understand what does perform cost of sales analysis mean, I can open up this comment box here in a little bit more detail and I can actually show you what we mean by perform cost, sales, excuse me, perform cost of sales analysis. And here's the specific definition. So that information is very, very key as organizations and individuals look and say, well, what do you really mean by that? Or is that something that we actually do within our organization? That being said, there may be times where there are certain tasks or certain activities that your organization may not do. And this may not be the, the best example, but for say for, for some examples that within performing your cost management, you didn't look at cost drivers. Well, if you needed to pull that item out from a framework perspective in order to make it customized to your business, you can absolutely do that. But if you were to do that, that would then adjust the hierarchy numbers here that are in the, these two columns, because this this item would then become 9.1.3.2, and this item would be gone. However, we will always have this activity of measure cost drivers as this PCF unique ID, so we will always know what exists within, within the organization. So it's a really good way for you to just, again, keep track of that information, understand where it exists, and as you start to use this framework to build SIPOX, or you start to use it to build RACI charts, or you even start to use it to build end-to-end -end processes within your organization and say, for us to execute accounts payable, or for us to execute the process of invoice to cash, I need to make sure that I'm using all of the steps and activities that are included in how I'm actually managing that supply chain within the organization, how I'm including 
some of my specific customer and sales activities that are associated with it, and then how I'm also managing my financial resources and pulling those puzzle pieces out to execute those types of processes within the organization. So again, it's a really powerful tool for organizations to, to leverage. So as I mentioned, this is our, our cross industry version that we specifically have. Let me also just quickly show you again. I mentioned this is the Excel version. If you scroll down a little bit, you can also access the PDF version of the framework as well and again it's just another view for you to look at in terms of how does this structure look like this one's a little bit easier to read the excel version is a little bit more from a workable file perspective but you can see instead of the tabs across the bottom we've created what we call our operating processes of one through six here and then we have our management and support processes that exist here the other item that you'll see though is it is very similar we're giving you the overview we give you a little bit of the background and the history we give you what all of the table of contents looks like. We show you this chart again in terms of how we go from a category all the way into the process groups, processes, activities, in some case, the tasks. Talk to you a little bit about the numbering scheme again, which I've done, and then we get into specific activities here that sh might show a little bit more of what this actually looks like from a decomposition perspective. So if I excuse the scrolling for a minute, but if I go all the way down here to section nine, you'll see the exact same activities that we were just talking about a little bit earlier in terms of how we're managing and doing our, our planning and accounting. Here's some of the examples I gave you about cost accounting in terms of that measure key drivers. Again, so the structure is the same. The activities are the same. Just two different ways of looking at that based upon what you're more comfortable with or what you are specifically more, more familiar with. So that's an example there of the two differences between the Excel version as well as the, uh, the PDF version. The other item that I would also just quickly show you is we have found that there are specific industries out there that do require some uh, uh, differences in terms of the way they the, the what they do within the organization. A lot of organizations can use the cross industry version. Some industries say we needed some specific frameworks built for the activities. And so I clicked on the the industry frameworks here and you'll see that we have 21 of them that are listed. And so it's everything from and these are an alphabetical. These are in alphabetical order here, but you can see airline is a really good example within our cross industry framework. We don't really have activities that are outlined around um, the loading of baggage or the unloading of baggage or the loading of passengers or the deplaning of passengers. It's in the cross industry framework, but it's not as explicit. But in the airline one, we needed to, to call that out. The other one that is a really good example, and let me just scroll down here a little bit. You can see some of the other ones are the things like the, the retail and a, a really good example around retail. And again, we have a, a PDF version. We also, if you scroll down here, we also have the, the Excel version as well. But a really good example here from a retail perspective that isn't fully outlined or included in the cross industry version is the idea of, of actually setting up a store. And so this one was created uh, in, in the, the first part of 2020 and Microsoft helped us actually execute this. But you can see as we go into some of the categories, some of the categories are a little bit different in terms of what we saw on the cross industry one. And a perfect example here is this idea around how do we actually merchandise products and services within our organization? So a lot of these upfront ones, what we called those, those um, activities that are more client facing are very similar except for this example here where we talk about some of the products and services. The other items, some of the what I would call the back office items or the support processes from human capital management, finance, IT, et cetera, all, all remain specifically the same. But if I go over to section four here as an example, the structure of the framework is exactly the same, but there's going to be items in there that might be a little bit different from a, a retail perspective. So things like how we're developing and managing sales and pricing plan. The sales and pricing plan from a retail perspective has a little bit different terminology than what a maybe a consulting organization does from a pricing perspective. Um, there may be other items down here in terms of how they want to manage some of their products or how they're procuring some of their materials or even things in terms of how they're managing productions or even as I scroll down a little bit further here, I was looking for the idea in terms of how they're hand handling some of their product master data. Again, similar ideas, similar ideas and concepts, but the way that they looked at it from a retail perspective, just again, just a little bit different. And so there were some, some differences that we said, this is enough in terms of the way they handle their stores, their store setup, their layouts that they need to create um, are a little bit different that we wanted to make sure we went ahead and included that information. So again, that's, 
that's how the the framework looks there. Those are all of the industry versions that are listed there. Let me go back just one page. These are all the industry versions that are, are listed here that we have within the process classification framework. But the design, the layout, whether it is in Excel or whether it is in PDF, that's all the same and that's all information that you can you can specifically gather. The other item and the last item that I'll just show you is this area down here where we have learned more about the process classification framework. And this is a really good way for you to say, what are organizations using it for? How else are organizations specifically using it? So there's some, some information here around, if you wanted to learn a little bit more about the PCF, you can download these, these articles. These are put up by our research services team and they're really good stories. I talked to see stories about how organizations are using it. I mentioned a little bit about the industry piecing out PCF. This is a really great resource here to say, I mentioned that the framework was created for benchmarking, but there's a ton of other uses that organizations are using it for. Some, some really good case studies that exist there. And then the last item that I'll, I'll quickly show you, a couple of the videos that we've created just to introduce you to PCF. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning of this conversation, I talked a little bit about how organizations use the PCF. Uh, that's a new video for you to leverage as well. And then this last item that I'll just make sure that I point out is we do have a very large LinkedIn community that leverages the process classification framework. So if you'd like to actually get access virtually, or maybe you know these people uh, face to face because they're in your actual peer peer network, or maybe even your organization said, can I connect with them on LinkedIn? Or can we ask questions? Can we engage? It's that virtual community that we have from a process classification framework within within LinkedIn that is a really great opportunity for you to Again, get other ideas, see how organizations are using it, maybe get some questions to some challenges that you might be having. Again, is a really great opportunity for you to, to leverage that information. So that's how the, the framework is, is specifically structured. I wanted to give you some insight to uh, what it looks like, where it is, again, how to access that. That is all up here at the top under the, the tools section. And if at any time you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to anybody at APQC. We're happy to help and provide you some, some guidance and some insight. Uh, but again, all of that information is available on our website, which you can get to here. So thanks for your time. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Have a great day.